Well, it's a very distinct privilege for me to be able to introduce especially some of our younger students who would not have had the opportunity to meet Dave Nelson to uh, Judge Nelson this evening. David had very few needs during his life, very, very high aspirations. And I'm sure that nothing would please him more for a continuing presence on his alma mater's campus than the existence of the David Nelson chair. In a sense, Dave and I got off on the wrong foot because as a member of our board, he was part of the search committee looking for a new president in the summer of 1972. And apparently the search committee had pretty well finished its work. And Dave consequently went off to Russia for a trip that was sponsored by a legal group. I was not in the candidacy at that time. So when David returned at the 1st of September, he found a new president whom he had not known was going to be a candidate. But from that day on, we got to be wonderful friends. Perhaps it's true of all great professional people, whether they be physicians or attorneys or judges, that it's impossible to draw a line where the attorney or the physician ends and the person begins. Personal values shape professional aspirations, and professional accomplishments become the means of living out one's personal ideals. There is no one for whom that was more true than of Judge David Nelson. David was a consummate professional, not just because of his lawyering skills, but because he so seamlessly assimilated his ideals as a lawyer and a jurist with those of his person. And it was not just a matter of his ideals. It was a matter of style, a style that was marked by humor and simplicity and thoughtfulness and understanding and generosity and enthusiastic hope for life. David, as a boy, finished his degree, his, his studies at the Latin School, and we were so proud that he came to Boston College for his undergraduate degree and then for his graduate degree in the law school. The qualities that I just mentioned became the qualities that directed his talents not only through his profession, but in the rest of his personal life. For David, wherever a generous eye saw a need, he was there to help. Days were never long enough, even on his re regime of eating one meal a day, which he did, to chair all the boards, to counsel all the agencies, to provide a listening ear and a helping hand to a student or to the son of a friend, or to any one of a score of agencies that needed wisdom and encouragement. And from each of all those associations, there formed a circle of deep and lasting friendships, a train of women and men, black and white, youthful and mature, clergy and lay, wealthy and of modest means, who revered and loved and boundlessly enjoyed the company of this remarkable man. Like many of you, over some 25 years, it was my privilege to come to know Judge Nelson not only as a trustee and as chairman of our board, but also as a close friend on ski trips, at social events, in peaceful liturgical services, in long conversations about jurisprudence, and through serious board deliberations. David brought to every situation his profound sense of reverence for the world and his boundless zest for life. 
his clear intelligence and uncanny sensitivity to the feelings of people. But underlying all these qualities, I believe that Dave possessed a special vantage point on life, a perspective that was uniquely his own. That vantage point, I believe, was the source of his quiet strength and the wellspring of the enormous contributions he made to his community and to each of us. That vantage point was a serene and unshakable sense of exactly who he was, of having lifelong beliefs and convictions and values that were at ground level not only profoundly human, they were religious. For a man who was supremely non-judgmental of others, David had his own inner compass, whose direction he did not draw from others or impose on others. That compass was set by an inexhaustible faith that he received from his beloved mother and father. He knew that the power of his professionalism was a unique avenue for helping other people and that helping people out of love for them and out of love for God was what his talent and his training in life was all about. As a result, there were simply no lengths to which David would not go to assist a person in need. And the needs he met were those of society's strong as well as those of the weak. I had the privilege of speaking at the final liturgy for David and for his mother who died at the same time. Let me close now as I did then with a few words of how David expressed the same idea in his own eloquent words in responding to an award that he received at the law school some years ago. So spoke David. As for me, it is a distinction to have served on the state and federal bench. Judgeship, at least in concept, is among the highest secular callings in our society. But I must admit, it is difficult for me to be fully satisfied, particularly in light of what was the prime vocation of my life. I speak of the years in which I was truly public, trusteeing social programs, advocating for faceless people, urging others to consider conciliation, representing poor folks and troubled folks and bad folks wanting to be good folks and community institutions poor in financial means but wanting to do their thing without overly bureaucratic interference and teaching young folks and doing all these people things that big folks sometimes could not or would not do. With time and experience and growing expertise, it is true that David's vocation matured into less immediate, but all the more systemic and universal ways of accomplishing his people things. But the vocation to enlightened charity remained the same. And through the presence of the David S. Nelson Chair, that same vocation to enlightened service to others will continue on the Boston College campus. Thank you.